Okay, everybody, here we are back with Emmett. And Emmett and I are just rapping, we're talking, um, loving this conversation. And actually, Emmett has agreed to share a bit about Emmett's testimony, a little bit about Emmett's story. And Emmett um, is just I, like what I hear you saying, Emmett, is like you're a believer in people, like you mm. believe in relationship, you're an advocate for people. Yes. So, where I don't even know, where do you begin talking about Emmett? Mm. Mm -hmm. So when, when I think, when you say that I am a believer in people, the first thing that comes to mind, so uh, you use the word believer as well. And so I think of like that in terms of faith. And then what comes to mind for me is I am a believer that I, like I see God in my relationships to other people. And I like, I personally, I identify myself as a Christian. That's what I grew up with. I believe in God. Uh, but that I think is just a word that is used universally for love. Uh, I think that they're one and the same. Other people like to call it other things, the universe, the creator, the divine, whatever. To me, like the name doesn't matter, but I do think I like the reason that I believe in that higher power and in that divine love is because I've seen it reflected in my relationships um, and the way that people are capable of showing love to each other um, I think that it is our like natural inclination to to do so rather than to cause harm to each other um, or to isolate um, even though we tell ourselves a lot of the time uh, that that loneliness is okay and that we we deserve it we don't and uh, that for me has like that really sums up my <laughs> entire belief system and my entire journey is like being relational and having those connections and maintaining them, I think that that is like hands down the, the most important aspect of life and of being. Yeah. And isolation is a very important word, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and it connects to so much of our dark emotion and the shame. Like we just think, okay, I should isolate if I'm feeling this terribly. Um, or if, if I, if, if I don't fit my own body or if yeah. um, I don't fit my own faith orientation, that's something that should be secret. Yeah. But then you're saying relationship. Yeah. And relationship doesn't happen if we have secrets and we have secrets because we have shame. And for me growing up, I had a lot of shame and I think it was difficult because I had no education around like LGBTQ identities other than um, that there's homosexuality and it's like, it's a sin. It's, it's not good. And um, I knew like from the time that I was young, I just always, um, so for people who don't, who don't know me, like I'm female to male transgender. And so um, I was born female and then later transitioned to male and uh, growing up, um, I, I always just knew that I was a boy, but I didn't have the language to express it. And I didn't know that that happened to other people. So I really just thought that there was something wrong with me, um, that I was crazy. And it was just like really hard to try and make sense of this thing that I had no words to express. And so that like over time as a kid, it's not, it didn't really feel like the end of the world. But as I got older and hit puberty and went into junior high and uh, I started to develop feelings for a close friend of mine who was a girl. And that's when it really like kind of hit me in the face. But even after that, like I, I've always uh, journaled regularly from the time I was a kid. And I remember not being able to write it down on paper because I was afraid that would make it real. Uh, even though I knew deep down that was something very real to me. And I spent a lot of time praying and asking God to take those desires away from me and to change me and then being very angry that he didn't. And that obviously really hurt my relationship to my faith in and of itself. Um, but because of the language that was used about queer people in my community, of course I didn't feel safe to talk about it. And I think that's why a lot of people in religious communities think that there aren't queer people in them. But the reality is there, there are a ton of queer people in the church who just don't feel that it's safe to tell their stories or to talk about the way that they feel. Uh, and so I spent a, like a couple of years not telling anybody. Um, 
and these were like people that I grew up with from kindergarten to grade nine. I went to the same Christian school. And so I was really terrified of like losing the only relationships that I had. And I think that's what spiraled me into uh, like the throes of drug use um, because it gave me an outlet to put all of those feelings to. Like when I left junior high, I started going to uh, Vic, um, which is an art school that's very open and diverse. And that was like very exciting for me because I was starting fresh away from everybody and everything that I knew. But I was also like, this is really scary. (laughs) And I was really socially awkward because I wasn't used to making new relationships with people who had different backgrounds. And uh, part of it for me was like, yes, I was using drugs to numb all of the emotions, but I also like realized that in using drugs and partying, I could easily make connections with people or develop friendships, whether they were based on anything meaningful or not. I was just so lonely uh, and isolated that that seemed like a good solution for me at the time. Right, right. And it's interesting when I hear you speaking, it, so often people will refer to drugs and alcohol as um, self-medicating, but there's also a space to acknowledge that it's spiritual medicating. And mm-hmm. I, like when I hear you speak, Emma, and, and, and some of the pieces that, that are on your new album, um, I'm so glad that, that you, you have woke so that others can wake Mm -hmm. and the the theology I hear in in the music that you're putting out there as well as the positive messages about mental health and love you know so psychology theology and love like it's just this beautiful important connection yeah totally and well and those things are all so deeply connected I think that everything Mm -hmm. is rooted in love and if it's not there's something wrong with it Um, and it took me a long time to get to that point.